particular condition. And so you have to listen very carefully to the way in which the body, this, this, the experience is lived from the inside. And so you have sort of an existential body. Um, and then you have, you have a body, a, a, a carnal body here, a body that is, is, is meat, the flesh and the blood and the, the bones and the skin and the, the sinews. But most important, you have the body as the skeleton, as a structure. That the way in which we theorize, we conceptualize the human, if you were just a, a spirit and if you weren't embodied, then you wouldn't square the, the, the circle. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think theoretically. You wouldn't think mathematically. You wouldn't think in terms of the, the forms that we impose upon the world in the way in which we live our lives in the world. And so this kind of embodiment has to do with the way in which we theorize, conceptualize the world in which we live. And so, so for the Chinese, this idea of embodying the world, participating in the world and shaping it in a certain way, uh, differentiating it in a certain way is, is one element. And then the second element, there's these passages in the, in the again, the path of the, the family reverence. Your physical person with its hair and skin is received from your parents. Vigilance and not allowing anything to do with injury to your person is where family reverence mm. begin. In this Chinese mm. world, uh, punishment is very often amputory. It's very often uh, branding. And it really has to do, in this ancient period, it has to do with your responsibility of returning your body to the ancestors intact. And, and because the body is a metaphor for the culture. We talk about a body of literature, a corpus of music. That, that the idea of keeping the body intact has to do with your responsibility as the younger generation to embody fully the culture that is being transmitted to you, to take responsibility for it, and then to pass it on to the next generation. And so this idea of body is a symbol. Like if you let the culture down, it's not simply your physical body, it's, it's the, the body of culture that is your responsibility. And so this is where, where, um, where um, family reverence begins. So we can say this, we want to summarize what we're saying. The body is the site of a conveyance of the cultural corpus of knowledge, linguistic facility, proficiency. You talk like your parents. Uh, religious rituals and mythologies, the aesthetics of cooking, the song and dance, the modeling of mores and values, instruction, apprenticeship, and cognitive. That, that what we're doing is the body inherits the, the tradition uh, from the world that has gone before. We've talked about roles themselves as normative, grandmotherhood, brother her, teacher him, and so on. And um, where I want to go, just to finish up here, is I want to bring it back to what I talked about uh, earlier on. And that is that this Confucian way of thinking what it means to be moral doesn't begin in some kind of an elite uh, status. It's not Aristotle, where everybody else works so that the philosopher can can uh, achieve eudaimonia, can, can achieve a kind of, that everybody has a family, and becoming moral is what happens in the family. We, the way that we learn to love is by being loved. If a child is not loved in the first days, the first weeks of the child's life, that child is put at risk mm -hmm. in terms of their ability to become fully social. And so, so we learn self-esteem, we learn to love, by being loved in family. So family nurturance is not optional in the process of becoming moral. And if you don't get it in the home, then you find it somewhere else. You find it in, in surrogate relationships. You find it somewhere. But in order to become, uh, to become moral, you need, Confucius, Confucius would say, if you only have one person, you have no person. We need each other in order to become moral as human beings. Maybe the most important thing that it says, and I'm going to stop here, is that I can only be a good teacher if I have a good student. Mm -hmm. And the better the student, the more exceptional the student, the better the teacher. I can only be a good father 
by having a great son. And when, when, when uh, people come, uh, my, my, my kids, they go in the kitchen, you know, they, they work and everybody notices that the family, my daughter-in-law, the sons, my wife, everybody is working to, to, to make some, that having great kids means people just say, oh, you know, you must be a good father. <coughs> that, 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 that we are interdependent. The way that we solve problems in the world is to recognize that if our neighbor does better, we do better. It's a win-win, lose-lose situation. And that brings us back to that first, the perfect storm. That necessity in your lifetime is going to mean that we need to have a change in values where this, this is not the answer, Confucianism is not the answer, but the idea of thinking, of getting back to family and to thinking about ourselves as relationally constituted human beings as opposed to discrete individuals is the beginning of thinking about the world in a very different way. That the world in which you're going to live is either going to be is going to be win-win or lose-lose. If global warming uh, continues, uh, we're all screwed. If it um, if it uh, if, if if we can bring uh, human the the, 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 the the culture the resources that we have together, then we can make a difference in the world. It's all about appreciating each other in terms of our relationships. Thank you.